I'm giving you guys way too much. Way too much right now. Look, four weeks, four weeks away from starting. Like it's getting to the point in my head where it's like, man, this is this is going to happen. So kind of just rearranging my mornings a little bit. This is my one cup of coffee that I do get and waking up a little bit earlier so that I have a little just creative freelance time. Uh, but main thing is that mornings, less coffee than usual. I think I'm gonna try to bring it down to one cup to get me going. This is just to clear the way so that I can kind of become a lightweight again when it comes to caffeine consumption. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, I'm prepping for it, man. Doomsday is coming. Well, it kind of feels that way sometimes. Just because I know how crazy the task is, you know, the totality of the work. Sometimes I can't help but think of it from that perspective is like, ooh, you know, it's like, oh, that's rough. Do you really want to? get into that but you forget that it's a process and you know you don't go like zero to 100 basically it's like hey over time you know you add this you uh you know, add more cardio remove some food you you've lost 10 pounds you lost another three pounds and, and then you find yourself at that point where it's like okay the hustle is on but that's not how day one is it's it's a gradual um it's a very gradual pace and then eventually you get to that point and I have to remind myself of that because right now it is a little daunting because I think I think I think of like the deepest darkest parts like when I think about prepping I'm like man I do that in four weeks and it's like no no no, not in four weeks you probably do that like in 14 weeks from today but not in four weeks so yeah yeah still man pump guys all right let me get this coffee so we're being reckless, man. It is 1230. Uh, the day just got away from me. Sometimes, you know how it goes, man. You just get busy with it and uh, you forget to eat. Uh, so so we have two plums, two kiwis, and then some leftover steak from yesterday. That's going to be meal one at this rate. Since I train at 630, I'll probably be able to snack and um, and yeah, get uh, get one meal get one meal in. So I'm going to do this. Um, days a little backwards. Go shower, refresh myself for the second leg of work and maybe go on a small little walk around the neighborhood and, um, and yeah, eat one more time. And then it's shoulders and arms, which is what I need the most of. And ironically, man, it also happens to be a really fun day. So, all right, meal one. Let's get this bread. So I guess I've gone over a lot of this stuff, you know, that uh, I'm bracing for, right? That I, because I know what the hit's going to be like. Um, but those things are everywhere, man. Um, one that's always on my mind is that whenever you do have some sort of social media presence. Man, people, they, you, they, you got an X on your back, which I kind of welcome. Honestly, it makes it kind of fun, but it certainly adds to the layers of uh, complexity when it comes to the situation. So this is something that I remember when Matt was competing, Matt Ogus, he had people traveling from all over the country, all over the world in some cases just to be up there and you know try to get a try to get their hits in you know so to be expected kind of fun in fact but uh at the same time like i said it does add a layer so keeps it fun too man it does it does um and i think more than anything what i'm always pushing for is for other especially drug-free pros to just put themselves out there a little bit more uh yeah, it definitely adds to the pressure man as if there isn't any as in as if there isn't plenty as is but at the same time hey it helps a sport man a sport that's you know bigger than any one single individual so that's why i'm on it so i'm filming today also to make this a habit because you know, when this should get for real, you know, I want me just popping this camera up to be just like 
not a bother just something that I, I've budgeted time for so all right we're gonna take one more lap I'm sure the camera out made it even weirder for the neighbors I'm already the weird dude on the block like no one knows what to make of me but <laughs> but they'll get to know me man and hopefully uh yeah they'll stop me every once in a while for a chat and see like oh that that uh long-haired fella semi-jacked uh pretty good dude this is low-hanging fruit for me because these are all areas that i need to focus on primarily the arms shoulders kind of just take care of themselves but uh nothing nothing on this day like gives me any like form of anxiety uh everything i don't know it's a chill day man and it's been fun and it's been productive this is my anterior delt press before i get into some of the finer things here I was just coming off a high rep block just to kind of soothe and lather the joints before we, like, we, we go after it again for a, a few weeks. So I felt like a touch behind. I just wasn't as like twitchy as I usually am. So that was 90 pounds for a set of six, two in the tank. That's what I think. Um, and this one, the drops usually confirmed that it was about two in the tank. Uh, I try to do, so it's a 10% drop off from the top set and then plus two on the first set plus three on the last set. So three sets in all. So I got six on the first one with 90s. Uh, this was 80 for a set of eight. And then finally my last one was 80 for a set of nine. I do think because I'm coming back from that high rep work that those 90s will probably go up for 10 reps uh, come, come next week. Uh, this is my overhead press. I think a lot of people would look at this and be like, well, there's a little probably upper chest in there, right? But I mean, look at the path of the humerus, right? It's not floating over where my um, clavicular head inserts. So if anything, uh, I think sometimes we tend to look at the human body as like it's this way, it's vertical or it's horizontal, uh, and it's very black and white, when in reality, this is something that I toyed around with in this on this tends to be about the best angle where especially in that bottom position i get a really good stretch in the front of the delts i don't feel compromised feels very natural and on the way up i really try to drive those biceps to my head and it feels gorgeous it feels wonderful first time i've overhead pressed consistently in, in years since i started to use this variation okay now we're on to biceps um so just my standard like standing single arm curl. This is kind of, so it's not stretched, it's not fully contracted. This is where I try to see and assess how well my arm work is, is going. So I definitely try to drive it near failure, like RPE nine-ish here. Um, and you're gonna see the discrepancy between like left and right arm. It's, it's quite large. So I was struggling with that left arm a little bit relative to what was going on with the right arm. So. This is kind of like the, okay, let's see how it's cooking. And then we get into, I guess, uh, the stimulus that should drive this first set in the right direction. Um, hey, look, for me, this is good arm development at this body weight. Uh, you know, there there's a point where you know, hey, joints can only fit in so much muscle, so the dimensions don't necessarily change, but the look gets better. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with how, I guess, hard my arms look at this body weight. I definitely think it is a uh, non-quantifiable PR for sure. Now we get into the work, all right? So... I use my better arm uh, for the video example here. So we start off with it in its fully shortened position. There's like a tendon inside my arm that just kind of, it crashes into something. You're going to see, it. there it goes. It kind of just flickers. Um, yeah, there it goes. Um, so we run this one to an RPE 9. Going with biceps here, by the way, because I want the triceps to have a little break before like we get after it again. So... So yeah, a little bit of a bicep intermission before we go back to triceps because the triceps are a little bit fried from the pressing. So same thing here, drive this to about an RPE9. We take about 
six, seven deep breaths. So it's kind of like cluster work, but the positioning of the humerus is being taken into consideration. This has allowed me to just use less total volume, but sequence it in a way where the work is, is really good. And it's crazy because that was, I believe, I think it was 70 pounds. We drop it to 60 for this one, and I'm able to get about the same amount of reps. So mind you, before I did this, I started with my left arm. I let the weak arm lead, and then I just match it up with my right. So usually unilateral stuff, that's how it goes. You let the weak side lead, and then the other side, the strong side, just kind of covers uh, exactly whatever the weaker side did. So it's a, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to make sure your strong side doesn't get any stronger. And then finally, there was another 10 deep breaths, and then we get into the lengthened position where there's still a little bit of life in the muscle. And again, more or less, I was able to get about the same amount of reps. So, so again, first set was kind of an assessment. How is my stuff working? How am I progressing? This is the actual stimulus that should drive up, I, I guess, drive the structural adaptations that I'm looking for as a bodybuilder. And then after this, we get into one more. So that's like the, it's like the finish him uh, set where it's just purely in the lengthened position. So just one set close to failure. Um, man, it's crazy because, you know, since I haven't been doing the traditional rep work, everything was like 15 to 25 uh, with shorter rest periods. Yeah, man, this was, again, I just felt like a step late, but by, yeah, by next week, I should be back to normal. And I feel great structurally. There was elbows were feeling it a little bit. I had this weird thing in, in, in my rear delt, but all that seems to have cleared up. It wasn't nothing major, but I, definitely something that I wanted to address before we get into, you know, like that final push and the early parts of a prep where it's like, hey, you can still poke through and make some progress on, on I, th I think, the majority of your lifts. Um, single arm tricep extensions. This right here, kind of the same thing with that, like standing facing the cable curl is just a almost all out set where I assess how well you know, everything is, is working. I like facing away from the cables, just puts me in a better line of pull. There we go, weak arm first, and then the right side just kind of repeats what the left side uh, does. Now, when it comes to triceps, I'm quite even on both sides. Uh, it usually is just a matter of like, what old ass elbow feels better, but, um, but yeah, man, um, really pleased with this one. It, it's funny, it's like, it, is you get back into your traditional rep work, especially coming off a phase like that. Um, it's almost like as the session goes on, it's like your body's catching on. It's like, okay, a little faster, a little faster. You need me to be on top of it just a little bit more. Um, okay, so that was, I guess, the assessment work. Still stimulus, but nevertheless, it lets me know how everything is clicking. And then we get into the actual stimulus. So we just got this piece here. Um, I used to have to do my long head like one arm at a time. I was doing the rope for a while, but it just, it, it was just hard to keep track of all my body parts. So I started to do, it, to do it single arm. But with this thing here, I can do both arms at the same time. Uh, first time using this, so a little rust. So you can see with the dismount leaves a little bit to be desired. Uh, but man, I can't wait to, yeah, really, really, really use this over the course of my prep. And um, and it, this contraption hasn't been as, like, it's been here for a while, but I haven't been wanting to use it. Because you know how it is, Jim gets a new piece of equipment, especially something like this. It's just always being used, but not as much as I thought. So it's like, okay, yeah, we, 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 uh, I, I allowed myself to program something that will really depend on me using this piece of equipment. Two sets of these hammer curls. Everything else you saw, with the exception of, of, of the overhead tricep extension, um, what you saw is what, what I'm doing with the tricep, um, with the stretch position, I am doing three sets there. Two sets of this. 
yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm digging my arms, you know, they're, they're still not as powerful of a body part as, say, my quads. But uh, hopefully I won't be as shy when I hit those like front double biceps. Then we get into some lateral raises and uh, based on like where I have the cable, uh, it's going to emphasize a little bit more of like that stretch position, kind of like you see the old school bodybuilders with like, you know, they would lean on the incline, similar, similar to that. Um, this one feels really good. I was getting over some tennis elbow. Oddly enough, it wouldn't affect anything in the gym really with the exception of my lateral raises. So that's why I was condemned to that machine, but I can throw this in the mix. Seems to be doing quite well, but yeah, it was, it was weird, man. It's like any, everything else I could do, but like pick up a drink, um, and, and lateral raises outside of like the, the, the machine that I was using, um, just was a, a no go. So really excited to start using these. They, they feel amazing. Uh, and then this was, this was the last bit, some rear duck flies, two sets of this. And that is my arm day. First day of the week, most important day for me personally. So I get this early as I'm coming, uh, uh, oh, you know, coming into the week fresh from usually the one day off that I do have Sunday. And then the workouts just kind of lose their uh, intensity as the, the week goes on. So it puts me in a position to just be really fresh and ready to go come this day. That was it. That's how we did it. That's how we did it. Not bad, huh? Okay, only one of these is for me. And then we got a big bowl of cherries. There we go. So we only eat rich in the beginning of the week and then, you know, it's cheaper protein sources, but we get the fish out the way when we do our shopping right. And yeah, this and I'll probably go through, through see what I got and add a little some extra to this because I'm quite low in calories today. Just because I have to say this, because you know, you know, the folks are man. They they see, um, yeah, they see a snippet of what you're doing, and they assume it's that way chronically. Yesterday was definitely like a bad day from an eating perspective, and um, I don't see it as necessarily a bad thing, simply because my intake is still kind of undulating in a pretty natural way. You know, it's like I'll eat a little bit more over the weekend, and then you know, come Monday, Tuesday, you know, just not as hungry. Also, um, like I go to the grocery store and I forget to get certain things, which definitely means that food focus, which everyone, including myself, will deal with to some extent when they're prepping, um, just isn't there. Cause I didn't, <clears throat> I came, I came back from my weekend shopping and I'm like, wow, I forgot to get some like more calorically, uh, dense things, you know, little things like uh, sweet potatoes, like I digest those really well, just bodybuilding tradition as well. Um, some rice probably would have been a good idea and probably a lot more just loaves of, of bread. So in general, I, I see that again as a good thing because I'm like loosey goosey to some extent. I'm definitely not under eating. My weight's been trending up slowly over the last month or so, but, but, but I like where I'm at. It's like, there's a lot of good habits. I'm not over consuming too much. I'm a lot more aware of what I'm eating relative to like peak off season weight where, you know, my job is just to eat. Like if you're not entirely full, it's like go to the kitchen and snack on something. So I, I like this body weight. It's, it, it feels healthy. It's, it's pretty easy to maintain. Um, I think a lot of the weird, funny look that I had at the end of my cutting phase where it's like, you're kind of oddly flat, like, and even when you're full, it's like that muscle group is full and this other one isn't, I think everything is kind of looking more consistent and like itself right now. So yeah, I think I'm in a fantastic position from a psychological standpoint, uh, from a body weight, body fat standpoint and four more weeks of this and and you know part of me like like i mentioned it's like i'm anxious excited nervous but also um and, and i just want to get there i just want these four weeks to 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 go by but at the same time it's like hey you know once that you know once that 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 uh <laughs> that clock starts you're kind of 
committed to this. So I've been trying to be a little bit more flexible, especially when it comes to those around me. Like, hey, hey, we have to amputate the last workout of the week. It's like, do it now, because at some point, you know, that's just not something you're going to be okay with. Um, I have a music festival planned for the week before the prep starts. So it's actually, it's going to be, the, that's going to be the week before the prep starts. And then there's the uh, Canelo versus B-Ball fight, uh, that, which is the week after. And then th that Sunday, the Sunday after the Saturday fight, is when we start our contest prep um so a lot of good things planned a lot of things i'm looking forward to things that i don't want to skip on that i do want to be there and present for and should anything else pop up in on my plate that just sounds fun it's like hey i can kind of redirect myself a little bit and, and go ahead and allow myself to enjoy that even if it comes at the cost of like the current bottom line there's not a whole lot of things that can go wrong in four weeks i have to remind myself of that even though i've done this plenty of times so I'm trying to, again, just enjoy where I'm at right now, freshen up, because before I know it, it's going to be, you know, all the responsibilities. It's going to be like, hey, practice your posing, you know, get your food in, um, <laughs> you know, like, you know how it goes, man. It's like it, it, it can be you can be three months out, but you always are going to feel a little behind and you live in 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 a world where you're just just your overall anxiety is just a little bit higher because of the athletic in adventures that you signed up for um which is fun is great but at the same time it's like the fresher i can start that prep uh from that perspective the more relaxed and the more i can kind of let that sort of environment kind of sort of come to me because it comes to you on its own it finds you at some point the better off i'm going to be so man that's that's where things are at four more weeks of this i need to remind myself to like enjoy it stop smell the roses and 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 just you know be a little bit more loose with it because before you know it again contest prep starts and now you're stuck this is the situation so that's how i am man generally really well, excited, um, I think in a much better headspace than where I was once the calendar turned into, you know, 2022. I'm like, man, this is, this is a competition year. So, so yeah, man, um, 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 great position. I've done this many times. I have to still remind myself of that. And, and, and despite the, how tall the order is, how, um, <laughs> how I guess in, in a way, I guess I can't say a lot is at stake for, for me, right? And this is all self-inflicted things I want. Um, I have to remember to, to enjoy it. The more I do that, usually the better the end product is. So yeah, four weeks, four weeks, we start that prep. Uh, I'll probably try to get one more of these for you guys. Um, so yeah, what, what would you, you guys like to see? I have uh, a, hamstring dominant lower body day i have a torso day so back and chest focus a little bit of arm uh work sprinkled there uh, i have a quad day quad focus lower body day um and then a full upper body day to end the week so you guys saw shoulders and arms that's the first day of the week and everything follows in that order what would you like guys like to see um yeah no whatever you guys like to see i'm an open book and, uh, and you forget, man, you do this long enough just by doing your things and going about it and speaking your thoughts. Like it can help a lot of people who are just getting rolling with this. So, so yeah, I depend on you guys. Um, last but not least, before I, I sign off, just I, I want to take a moment to appreciate everyone. Like I, it, it's like my group of supporters are just different, man. And uh, there's been numerous things in, in the last few weeks that have just reminded me of how fortunate I am to have you guys. So, so yeah. So anything I can do for you guys, I'd absolutely love to do. Um, this is a lot more fun because of y'all. So appreciate y'all. We'll get one more of these in before we start the actual prep. And I'm pumped, man. I'm pumped. And... Look forward to having you guys there.